Hi guys and welcome to Radwolf and Bushcraft. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Today I'm out foraging for wild garlic. That's this plant right here. And if you want to learn how to identify that plant and how to forage for it properly, then just join me. So the first thing we have to look for if we're on a hunt for wild garlic are these very distinct patches. As you can see, wild garlic usually grows in groups of plants, almost like a carpet across the entire forest floor, right? And then we quickly realized this very distinct leaf shape. It's basically lance or spear shaped. And what's also a great indicator for this plant is that it's growing on rather wet and rather soggy soil, so almost swamp-like. If you can see this right here, this is almost like some type of humus type of ground. So that's a great indicator that we might deal with wild garlic here. There's two double gangers that are toxic, so I'm going to go into detail now and just show a couple of characteristics of Allium ursinum, or wild garlic as this plant is called, and then we will just discuss this in detail, all right? All right, before having a closer look at the characteristics of Allium ursinum, or wild garlic, let's just briefly discuss the two most prominent double gangers that are toxic and potentially deadly if you confuse them with wild garlic. And those would be the lily of the valley and the autumn crocus or meadow saffron. The Latin names will be put in the subtitles for those that want to do a bit of research, but basically all of those three plants are part of the family of lilies, just as well as our wild garlic here. And it's really important to make sure that we are going to look for all characteristics, because just a couple of leaves of the autumn crocus will be fatal for a grown-up person, and also the lily of the valley in higher doses will be fatal. So just make sure that you don't go and forage any kind of plant that you can't identify properly. Always make sure that you identify everything you take home before you're actually consuming that, because it can be potentially potentially deadly, okay? So yeah, that said, back to Allium ursinum or the wild garlic. If we just take a look at the leaf again, we already saw that it has this very distinct spear shape or basically like a, yeah, how do you call it, like a lance shape type of leaf right here. And if we take a look at the backhand side, then we do see that all the leaf veins go in a parallel direction to the actual leaf stem. The leaf stem is also very important to have a look at because Allium, as such, just has one leaf per stem. If this would be the lily of the valley, it would look more like this. So basically two leaves at one stem. Let me just get that on camera for you. See? This would kind of like be the look of lily of the valley. So you, we already got a great indicator here that this could be Allium ursinum or the wild garlic. Also really interesting, if you just rub these leaves, like so, you would get this kind of garlic-like smell on your fingers, because as you can see all the oils are dripping out, and that's also a great method to figure out whether this is wild garlic, but it's not safe, because if you already collected like a couple of those leaves, your fingers would smell like garlic anyway, so you could still confuse them, like uh, the toxic varieties also with wild garlic, so make sure you use uh, different methods too. That said, here's one very important attribute. Let's get that close. If we're taking a look at the cross section of the stem, right here, then we do see that the stem is not fully round. It has an edge right here and there. Basically, almost like a half circle or like a moon. Some people also call it a triangle. But as you can see right here, it's flat on that surface here and then has the corner right here and here another edge. And that's a definitive um, attribute of the wild garlic. If this would be lily of the valley, it would be totally round. And if it would be the autumn crocus, there would not be a stem at all. So by that you can make sure that you're really dealing with the plant you want to harvest, right? Always make sure you check the cross section of that leaf. And then as a final test, also something that's really interesting, if you take the leaf of uh, the wild garlic and you just bend the leaf vein here, you get this popping sound here. 
and that's a clear indicator that we're dealing with wild garlic. Always make sure you use all these kind of methods. Maybe you can also just take the leaf like this and just feel it because allium as such is really really soft whereas the other two toxic varieties are pretty chewy and pretty tough. So yeah, if you take care of all these kind of tests then you can make sure that you're dealing with the proper plant, take it home, use it for your kitchen or for medicinal purposes. All right, just to summarize it again, a lens-shaped leaf with parallel leaf veins alongside the stem, always one leaf per stem. If it would be two leaves at one stem, that would be the lily of the valley. If it doesn't have any kind of stem at all, but grows in kind of like a rosetta, as we call it, or basically like a rose-shaped kind of pattern, then it would be the meadow saffron. And always make sure, you know, you're also going for this pop test, just like this. Only the wild garlic makes a popping sound. The other two plants are just too chewy, which you can also feel in the texture. And if you're really not sure, you know, just take it, rub it, smell it, and it just smells wonderfully like garlic. I can only recommend using that plant because it's just great for any kind of dish, you know. If you make bannock breads and you just want to spice them up, or if you want to do some kind of other dish in the outdoors, it's always nice to find them. Usually, those plants grow between the beginning of March and the end of April. So just make sure you go out now. That's also why I'm shooting this video so you can still profit from getting yourself some of that wild garlic. Um, it's also great for medicinal purposes. For example, if you have a cold, it contains a couple of oils that is just great for opening up your nose and such. And I'm just really loving this kind of plant. So yeah, give that a try. Please let me know if you like the video. If this is of help to you, then just give me a thumbs up, of course. And up until then, I would say, Make sure you subscribe, stick around, and I'll see you next time, okay? Have a great day. Bye-bye.